my name is William E. West. I was born 8-16-1936 in Ethelsville, Alabama. My mother's name is Ann M. <clears throat> Manning West. My father's name is Lester West. My grandfather's name is Manson Manning. My grandfather, grandmother's name is Lizzie Manning. I went to school <clears throat> in uh, Ethelsville, Alabama from the first grade through the fourth grade. And then we moved from there to Mount Hope and I went to school in Mount Hope, Alabama from the four, uh, fifth grade through sixth. And then I went to Moulton High School from the sixth grade through the twelfth. Moulton High School was uh, perhaps the turning point in my educational process. I had some of the best teachers in the world, I think. I had some teachers that motivated me to go on and try to do some of the better things in life. One of them that stands out in my mind is Mrs. Carrie B. Petty. She was the kind of person Every time she saw you, she talked to you about education. Every time you passed her in the hall, she had to say something to you about her education, but she was a very good motivator. My next motivating person was my high school coach. Uh, I tried to play a little football. I don't know how good I was. They say I was pretty good, but that's another question. But he would push us, push us, push us. And uh, I wanted to be on the team. To sit on the bench was the last place I wanted to be. So I, I worked very hard to do what he asked us to do so I could be on the team. Our best year, uh, we played uh, six games a year, I think it was. But anyway, one year we went uh, five and one. That was our best year. Incidentally, that year we should have gone undefeated, but guess who fumbled the ball? Me. <laughs> but that's, I guess that's a part of life. From there, I graduated in 58 and went to Daniel Payne College uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. <clears throat> in Birmingham, uh, Alabama, uh, well, I say the dormitory, and uh, a group of the fellows and, and I got together because we was talking about the struggle that was going on in America. And I'll never forget it. Uh, one night we was all in one of the fellows' room talking about uh, whether we should get involved in the civil rights struggle and what we should do and how we should do it. Anyway, somebody, uh, somebody, one of the fellows said, say, Wes, you know you could die. Now that's the strangest feeling in the world you could have. Somebody sitting up telling, telling you that you could die, even though, you know, we all knew that. Uh, perhaps the most touching part of my getting involved in the civil rights struggle was uh, this sit-in demonstration. We sit in at Woolworth's uh, store in, in Birmingham and uh, pa Parker, Mr. Robert Parker and I was sitting together. And that was a scary day. That, I'll never forget that day as long as I live. But uh, I said that the, same, the thing that saved us and kept us from getting beat up was the cops coming and arrested us. Other than that, and folks were getting redder and redder in the face that we were sitting beside of. Anyway, they took us on to jail. And uh, we stayed in jail uh, overnight. And uh, the next day, they let us out. And we went back to the campus to a hero's welcome. Uh, when they got ready to have our trial, I don't know why they did it that way, but uh, they had it at night. 
Uh, I think it started at 7 o'clock. Anyway, I said, I'll try a pre-arrangement. Anyway, they had us to come to the courthouse. When we got to the courthouse, the strangest thing in the world uh, happened. I've never seen a courthouse full of white folks and no black folks. And, and maybe three blacks sitting in there. We wouldn't let them. But when uh, we come to the courthouse in a limousine, I said I'm a limousine in a car. And black folks was lined up three or four blocks away and they screamed when uh, when we got out of the car to uh, uh, to go in the uh, courthouse to be arraigned. Uh, that was touching. Maybe one other thing, the most stupidest thing I've ever done in the civil rights struggle was uh, uh, I decided to come home one year because we had, we'd had no car, so we was driving. The, I was riding the bus. Got on the bus, sit in the first seat behind the driver, and uh, we come from Birmingham through Jasper, through whatever, all through the woods out there. And uh, somewhere the bus stopped out there to take on some passion or so to do something and a white boy looked at me. So I eased back in the corner and pretend I was asleep. Anyway, we I come on to Russellville and uh, my folks picked me up, but that was a scary thing. It was scary because uh, the simple fact there was nobody else protesting but me and they could have took me off the bus and you know you you would have never heard of anymore but anyway nothing happened that particular day but that was when I look back at it was uh, was very very frightening the other thing that uh, was kind of different about the civil rights struggle I did some voter registration work in New Orleans and we was trying to get just people to register and vote, but people would talk to you so ugly and act so nasty with you and act so ridiculous with you. But uh, we went on and uh, was able to get quite a few uh, people, black folks to vote, even though we were not primarily trying to, we was trying to get anybody to vote who, who, was, not a, who was not a registered voter. But uh, that worked out uh, pretty well. But other than that, uh, uh, my, uh, oh, one other thing. Uh, I come home one year, I don't know what year it was, brought my wife and the children, and they were at Annie Mae's house, and I, I went over there to do something. Anyway, one of the children come running over and said, Dad, there's something wrong with Granny. She's crying. When we ran back in the house to see what was wrong with Mama, and Mama was uh, hysterical. She reached over and touched her son and said, Son, will you please leave the civil rights? And that, that took a toll on me, but, uh, you know, it, it was hurting her I, uh, more than me because I never did think about it dying too frequently, but uh, that was one of the things that uh, will always stand out in my mind. Uh, I guess that's uh, about all the questions uh, I have to uh, uh, answer for myself. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Fran. I'm sitting here behind the camera. I was born Frances Olivia Bush, the oldest daughter of Henry Lee and May Olivia Bush. And uh, we're here in my home in Trinity, Alabama. And Babra, as we call him, is my cousin. Uh, but I wanted to ask him some things about the family. And his story about civil rights is just amazing. I learned a lot today. But uh, I wanted to know when and where you were born. I think you mentioned it in the first part of the video, but... Yeah, Elphinsville, Alabama. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Elphinsville, Alabama. Uh, that's the southern part of uh, Alabama. It's, it's in Pickens County. That's where it is down there. Yeah, yeah. That, but that's where I was born. Uh, 
in 1936. Uh, uh, we was born on a farm. I was born on a farm. And uh, of course, back in that time when uh, that was all to do was to pick cotton or uh, either work at a sawmill. And my father worked at a sawmill. And uh, of course, we farmed. And uh, we picked cotton and did whatever. But that young, I don't, I don't know uh, how much cotton I learned to pick. But I, that's that's what we did do. Uh, if I might just add something else here, my uh, hero was my grandfather. My grandfather was Manson Man, and uh, he was about. 6'6", six, six. he weighed about 250 pounds, but he was not fat any place. And uh, he, he would take me to Pickensville, where he would take me to wherever. And I always admired him, uh, admired him for doing that. But the, the, the thing that really turned me on, I understand in 1920-something, a white man asked my grandfather to let his sons unload a bale of cotton. So he said, well, if, if they do it, you got to pay them whatever it was. Let's call it $3. So the white man said no. And from that, uh, they got into uh, an argument and uh, my grandfather beat the steam out of him and uh, I, I always admired him for doing that because back in that day for a black man to put his hand on a white man you 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 are you are asking for 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 some some headaches but my grandfather didn't tell me this my mother told me this uh, I guess I was 16 17 18 years old and I always admired him and that probably helped uh, motivate me to get involved in the civil rights struggle because if he got involved back in the 20s, uh, he, he had a lot of nerves to uh, to do what he did, and uh, I, I always admired him for doing that. Did you know his parents' names? I didn't know his mother's name or his father's name. I had I have no idea. The only thing I was told that. Uh, they come from Virginia to Vienna. That's some little place down there near Aliceville. And uh, from there, they moved from there to Ethelsville, Alabama. But I, I didn't know, uh, didn't know his, his, his mother or father's name. Okay, you said your father's name was Luster West? Yeah. Did yeah. you know his parents' name? I don't know their name. I, I've never seen them. Neither one of them. Okay, what was your dad like? My dad was a funny man. <laughs> he was a man that uh, looked, he kind of gave me the impression that uh, he didn't worry about anything. Uh, incidentally, he was a bootlegger and uh, he, uh, he, he made the moon shine and made some extra money and uh, uh, I. I guess I always admired for trying to figure out some way to make some extra money to try to feed uh, feed everybody. But uh, he, he was uh, he, he just gave me the impression that nothing bothered him. He just seemed to stay happy all the time. Well, we all remember Aunt Annie, your mother, Annie Manning West. We call her Aunt Annie. Yeah. What can you tell us about her life when you were growing up? Oh. Uh, what she was like. Mama, Mama was to me the sweetest person in the world and yet she would tell you what to do and if you did do it she would uh, she'd let you know uh, that you didn't do it by, by, uh, by punishing you with a uh, whatever she could get her hands on, but she was a, a sweet person. She worked very hard to uh, take care of us and to see that uh, we got the things that we needed. Now, I'll, I'll always admire uh, 
I, I, I still admire. She, she was a strong, strong woman that uh, just stayed at it and, and would see that, uh, you know, we, uh, we got to, the best that she could give us. And I always admire her for doing that. Okay, well, we know that Mary Manning Cameron Bush it was her niece. Uh, Y'all called her doll. Can you tell us what she was like when she was younger? Uh, a doll named me. And uh, the thing I remember about doll, doll would always bring us some candy or bring us something when she'd come to visit. And uh, I always look forward to uh, uh, her coming to visit. Uh, I remember one time she brought me a little uh, gun. I want to say it's a cap gun, and it, and uh, I always remember that. Uh, Dog was the kind of person. Uh, she she gave me the impression that uh, she took life serious, but uh, her demeanor was she was a kind person, and uh, she was a person that liked to cook and could cook just about anything I, I assumed that she wanted to do. But uh, Dawg was, uh, was a good woman, yes. Uh, do you remember all of your mother's siblings and any siblings? Uh, well, <clears throat> the only one that I uh, got real, real close to was, uh, we call her Aunt G, but her name was Emma Petty, uh, Emma. Uh, A.G., and that's what we all call her, was the kind of aunt that uh, she stayed in Aliceville. And uh, maybe once a month, uh, uh, she'd come up to visit us. She would always bring us some apples, oranges, candy. She always brought us something. She, she would bring it every time, every time she come, and I always, uh, uh, look forward to that and she was uh, a very kind woman uh, she uh, she never did punish me uh, any of the rest of them that I know of but uh, I, I I thought she was the, the sweetest person in the world and uh, I, I admire her still admire her uh, can you tell me who your siblings are I remember Gladys and Annie Mae and you, was oh, there oh, any more? Oh, okay, let's 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 start back. Uh, my oldest brother was named Willie James West. My next, the next brother to him was Jesse James West. Uh, my uh, sister that was next to him was uh, Elizabeth. My sister that was next to her. Her was uh, Beth Ann, I believe her, her first name was. Then Gladys, Anna Mae, and me. I'm the seventh child out of out of the family, and uh, I'm the baby boy. Oh, incidentally, let me just add this: uh, my sisters Gladys and Anna Mae always said, uh, "Mama would do special things for me." I, I don't know whether that was true or not, but uh, I'm the baby son, so uh, I never have to learn to cook. I never have to learn uh, to do dishes. I never have to learn to wash. Uh, it, I, since I was a baby, I had sisters who would always do those kind of things. And uh, Gladys and Anna Mae was the uh, sisters that uh, would, would do that. Uh, Gladys perhaps was the best cook that I know of uh, out of the children. She was very good at doing whatever she was able to do in the house. Okay, I know you're probably too young to remember the Great Depression, but do you remember your parents or anybody talking about how we, our black people, made it through the Great Depression? Or was it just regular to them because of the, str the struggle? The, the thing I barely remember was that they rationed shoes, they rationed sugar, uh, they rationed meat, uh, and 
I guess some other things. But anyway, uh, when they put uh, uh, the meat uh, on the, in the counters, they had the skins off of the uh, ham where they would uh, uh, hurle the, the meat out. And Mama used to take that and 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 all parts with it and made it finger looking good. Uh, the sugar, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that the youngsters don't know anything about this, but uh, was uh, if you leave molasses in a uh, bucket long enough, it turns back to sugar because that's where it comes from. And we have used that to uh, sweeten whatever we want or need to sweet. She'd take the molasses, make cakes out of it. I, I can't recall what she uh, uh, would call a cake. I don't think she would call it molasses cake, but she called it something. And it was finger licking good. And she'd do pies out of it uh, because they couldn't afford what well, they couldn't afford. They, they couldn't get the sugar. One, one other thing uh, that I... Uh, that I remember when I was a youngster growing up. Uh, <clears throat> they uh, rationed shoes. Or in other words, you could only buy one pair of shoes mm -hmm. if, you could, if, if you could find those. And uh, being a youngster, uh, you know, children jump up and down and tear up the shoes, but uh, they would take the shoes once you would tear them up and uh, try to fix them so you could wear them the rest of the winter and of course uh, uh, you had a pair of shoes that uh, you would wear to church and when you got home from church you took them off right quick and put them in a the corner and uh, didn't tear those up but uh, uh, during that time it was very uh, very stressful for blacks because Blacks was at the bottom of the totem pole and the folks who knew somebody could get maybe an extra pair of shoes, get some extra sugar, uh, uh, get some extra meat and, and where blacks uh, were not able to get that and I, I thought that was uh, something that I'll never forget but we survived it and uh, I'll uh, say that uh, you know, if, if, if we survive that, we should be able to, <laughs> to live through just about anything. Um, my dad, Henry Lee Bush, and his wife, which is my mother, May Olivia Bush, I know you remember them when they were young. Can you tell me what their life was like when they were young and y'all being together or playing or whatever it be? Uh, being around Doll and her husband when they were young, young, uh, uh, he was the kind of person that uh, gave me the impression that he loved his wife to death and uh, he worked like heck and uh, from time to time they would come get me and uh, I'd stay over for maybe a day or so and uh, they would always buy me candy and cookies, soft drinks and uh, I recall that they stayed in a small, small house down in Elphisville and uh, I remember Doll and her husband, I don't remember their social life, I remember them getting up, going to the field and they'd tell me to stay, stay there and uh, she'd plan some food for me and uh, I stayed there until they come back from uh, doing whatever they were doing in the field. Okay. Um, what about my parents, Henry Lee and Olivia, what do you remember most about them that stands out? Well, you know, you know Henry Lee, uh, Henry Lee was my favorite cousin. Now, you know all this, but then, you, yeah, then I need to uh, tell you how I feel. Uh, Henry Lee uh, was the kind of person that, if you didn't like him, you just didn't like him. If uh, you didn't like Olivia, you just didn't, because she was a very lovable person, and I enjoyed being around her. Uh, uh, she was uh, more of the little, the comedian one. She always had something funny to say to me, but then life 
uh, did take some serious turns and we'd sit down and discuss some of the things that were going on in our lives and uh, I, I always enjoyed being around here in Lee and uh, of course they come to New Orleans uh, two or three times uh, and I might have that right but anyway they come down there and uh, we, we, we had a lot of fun each time it comes and uh, uh, I, I always uh, look forward to being uh, uh, being around him. and each time I'd come home of course I'd run to Henry Lee's house well I had to stop at my favorite cousin's house and uh, Henry Lee was the cook he always had a ton of food hey bro what you want to eat I would eat whatever and uh, we'd sit there and talk and laugh and uh, I, I, I just admired he, 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 him and uh, him and his wife and a, <coughs> he and his wife. Thank you. Uh, I know you mentioned earlier about school and uh, who inspired you in school but I was wondering back then how did you get to school? Was it school buses or did you walk? or? Well, we, we walked to Mount Hope School. Now, I tell Lisa every Sunday morning when we go by Mount Hope School, we walk from where Mama stayed to the school, the church. The school was in the church. We walked. Uh, the bus started picking us up. Uh, I think we was in the sixth grade. From, from there, we are. Uh, we went to Moulton and uh, it picked us up every uh, every uh, day after that. But uh, it um, for me it was kind of fun, except when it was snowing and when it was raining and all that. Uh, cause, because there were other families, we'd go by their house, their children would come out, we'd get together and walk walk on to school. The Hubbards, for an example, Raymond Hubbard might be related to uh, 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 y'all on the Hubbard side, but I don't know. But uh, we, we went to school to Jacksons, uh, Percy Jackson. We went to school out there. That uh, Goldstons. Uh, we went to school out there with uh, some of the some of the younger Goldstons. We and we had we had a lot of fun out. Do you remember your elementary teacher's name? My elementary teacher out there was named Mrs. Jackson. I don't recall her first name. I don't recall what her first name was, but uh, she was a very nice lady. Uh, very nice. I didn't, I didn't, she didn't have a problem with me, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you remember any of the older family members talking about slavery? Did any stories get passed down about being a slave, or were they free people or enslaved people? I, I, my grandfather would have been the one to tell those kind of stories, but he he never did talk about it. He never he never mentioned it to me one time. The only thing he would say to me, he said, "Brother, do what I tell you to do. I don't want to have no problem with these white folks because if he put his hands on you, he, he got a problem." <laughs> And of course, I, I believe he meant what he said, but uh, the, the slave report, he, he never mentioned it. And uh, Mama wasn't, never mentioned anything about anything that was told to her. Okay. Uh, what was the house like that you grew up in and the bathroom and did you have electricity or telephone? <laughs> uh, the house we grew up in was... Uh, we called it a refrigerator in the winter time. <laughs> it was it was it was very cold in there. It was very cold. We had uh, we did have heat, uh, but the coldest part of it was uh, uh, going to bed. Uh, and uh, I remember when uh, Mama could afford it, she got us the double blanket. So you'd run in there, jump in the bed, and get between a double blanket, and uh, you, you'd warm up pretty quick. Uh, of course, the kitchen, we had the uh, stove in there that was, uh, you, you, you know, 
build a fire in the air and sit down and uh, uh, have your food. So it was, it was uh, pretty warm, but uh, I always said to myself, when I got grown, I'd never live in a cold house. I'd never live in a hot house. And I've been fortunate enough to not have to do that. But those old folks, they did the best they could do. That was the best they could do. And, uh, you know, once they gave you their best, there was nothing else they could do. And uh, it was kind of rough, so. Did you have electricity? Uh, what year did we get electricity? We got electricity in the house in 19, let's call it 55, 55, 54. Wow. We got electricity in the house, but that was just for the lights. Uh, we, we had no uh, heat from any electrical equipment, but, but we did have de uh, diesel lighting prior to that. Uh, we only had the lamp lights in the house that you'd have to study by and uh, we had uh, one lamp we'd leave in the old dining room on until you got rid of it so you'd have light to go in there if you need to go in there and of course where we were sitting in the living room uh, we had the lamps in there and uh, of course uh, that was just a way of life and I never did worry about it too much, but uh, you know, I, I guess uh, you know, at some point I, I, I think about it or uh, something, but I, I never did worry about it. Uh, let me just add one other thing. I used to date a young lady, and they had a, uh, in the living room, they had a fireplace, and uh, in the wintertime, that's where you would sit and talk to the young lady, and uh, they closed the house off, so uh, so so you'd be warm as possible. But it was just a way of life. Most folks uh, didn't have uh, uh, excellent heating, and of course, you know, we didn't have an air other than what was blowing through the cracks. <laughs> but uh, the, the the heating was uh, was miserable. So how many rooms was in the house? Three, four? Uh, we had three, three, three rooms. We had three rooms. Had three rooms. So where did everybody Mama, sleep? Mama. Mama and the daughters slept in one room. Uh, Billy and I, who is my nephew, slept in one room. And of course we had a living room. <laughs> uh, we didn't have no heat in there. Uh, uh, we had a living room with a sofa and the, the little table, the, uh, the chairs, and what have you. Okay, did you all have an outdoor toilet? You had to ask that question. <laughs> we had one at the house and one at the school in Mount Hope. I, I, uh, well, that was a way of life. We had one. We had one. Yeah. That was uh, embarrassing, embarrassing to say the least, but that's, that's what we had. Um, what can you, what, what is your youngest memory or earliest memories of Rock Spring Church and the pastor and of course the outdoor toilet out there that's still standing today. My dad built it, but I don't know what year he built it, but he told me he built it. It's out there. Yeah, it's still, it's there. still there. I took pictures of it a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, well, let's, let's back up a little bit with you with the church thing. Uh, Mama would always say, and that's Anna West, my mother would always say, I'm going to church. We're going to be on time. We're not going to be late. Well, by that time, uh, I was 17, 18. Well, at that age, you, you like to go out. So you don't want to get up early on Sunday morning, but Ann West will come in there and tell you one time, get out of that bed, she come down again. You, you. But anyway, we'd get up and go to church, and uh, usually we was the first person there, and the next person was there was Reverend Bird, and uh, 
we ought, uh, we would do whatever we had to do at the church, and uh, I, I enjoyed that part of uh, uh, my life because this day I get up and go to church, and there's nobody there to push me out the door. But I start doing it because uh, 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 the 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 way Mama had us trained, uh, trained us, and let's let's. Let's just add one other thing to that. Uh, I had to work, guys. I had to work. Well, I got a little extra job in Moulton, and uh, I was working at a sawmill. I think it was Literals, Loma Company. Anyway, I had to be there at seven. Mama would have me leave. Mama would have me to leave the house at six in the morning to drive fifteen minutes. But what she said to me was that it, it, it made sense, after you think about it for a second. Said, brother, you know, if you have a problem with the car, maybe you can catch a ride, or maybe you can get somebody to come by and fix it. But if you leave at the last minute and you have a problem, then you're going to be late going to work. I get up every morning right now, 5.30, uh, 5.15, I'm out the door, 5.20, I'm at my work. Good. That's good. Um, you, I know you were raised, all of us were raised to be Christians, but what do you think our religion was before slavery? Did you ever hear the family talk about it or you studied about it? I, I, you know, you know I, I, I've never heard anybody uh, in my family talk about it. They, they s stay with uh, the Christian phase of it. But uh, when I got a little older, and I know you didn't ask this, but let me add it to it. Uh, that was in 1961, I believe it was, 1961. I was sitting down with a, uh, a group of young men, and we started talking about thing and uh, I got involved with a young lady who was a black Muslim they call we call themselves as one of Mohammed's uh, uh, followers and I almost become a black Muslim I did I really did uh, the, the black Muslims in my day in 1961 62 was saying what I I thought we needed to be doing. They were saying that, you know, if somebody gonna beat the steam out of you, you just don't stand up there and let nobody beat you up. You, you, you do something to defend yourself. Well, the fellows that I socialized with talked me out of it. <clears throat> we were sitting down socializing, having some fun. And they said to me, so now, well, now Wes, if, 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 if you're gonna fight with somebody, you gotta have bullets, you gotta have ammo, you gotta get from one place to another place, and uh, when you shoot your last six bullets, what you do then? That's the reason why I didn't become a Muslim. Other than that, I'd have been a Muslim today, because they were saying what I really believed. They was, they, they was really saying it, and uh, I, uh, I come close, come very close. That was most of our ancestors' religion before slavery. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, what else I was going to ask you was tell me about your marriage or marriages and your children. How many children you have? Their names. Okay. My uh, I, my first wife was uh, from South Carolina. Her first name was Quest West. Uh, from that marriage, we have two daughters, uh, Melissa West and Lafrida West. Lafrida is in Baton Rouge today. Uh, uh, Melissa is uh, up here with with me. Uh, I got married again in uh, 06, 06, 06, 06, and uh, married to uh, Helen Nelson Howard, and we've been married for five, five, six years, six years. Okay, what was uh, Quest's maiden name, your first wife's maiden name? Uh, Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N. She's from a little place called, uh, a little place called Newberry's, out from Columbus, uh, 
uh, her brothers, she's got one brother and uh, very good friends. He, he, anytime it cloudy up, he calls me and says, we've got a hurricane. Uh, one or two of his, uh, her sisters and I are very, very good friends. They stay in touch with, with, uh, with me, with us. <clears throat> Okay, uh, any more children? No, no, no. Oh, one, one, one child, one child. I'm getting old on you. <laughs> uh, before my wife and I got married, uh, I did have a son, uh, Charles Young, a uh, uh, young lady who stayed in Malta. He passed uh, about four or five years ago. I have uh, one uh, granddaughter who is his daughter, and one great-grandson, who is uh, her son. Those okay. are all the children I have. Okay. Um, let me see. How did you end up in New Orleans? How did I end up in New Orleans? Oh, I was in Virginia. Uh, what's the name of the place in Virginia? Uh, Carl Pelt. Virginia and uh, my wife was pregnant with her, our first child and the doctor said if we were going to uh, uh, travel we needed to travel before she got pregnant 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 well and uh, not pregnant pregnant before she got so late and pregnant so we left uh, uh, Cub Pelper and went to New Orleans and uh, uh, a young man supposed to have given me a job but then we had some kind of problem with that so uh, my wife and I then decided so where are we going to stay? I said well we'll stay here and uh, we stayed and I stayed in New Orleans until 05 and uh, I guess I'd have been there now if, the hurt, if Katrina hadn't come through I, I, yet I don't know can you tell me about your experience with Katrina? What was it like and what uh, happened to your home? And uh, Okay, we are uh, uh, two buddies and I uh, had planned to uh, really stay in New Orleans for, for Katrina because we had got a hotel. We all were in the same hotel, so we don't want to be on the ground floor, so everybody get on the second floor, third floor, whatever floor. I went on to work that Saturday, and when I come home, my my uh, uh, answering machine was blinking. So I answered it. One of my buddies called me and said, Wes, I've been sitting here watching Katrina all the morning. It's got all of Alabama, the bottom part of Alabama, cover, cover, all of Louisiana and part of Texas. Say, I'm leaving. <laughs> so uh, uh, Lisa and I, uh, got in the car and uh, come on up here that uh, that's out that's out yeah uh, when we went back uh, after the hurricane after the hurricane uh, we had about six foot of water in the apartment uh, we lost everything uh, that uh, uh, was not metal and uh, of course, uh, I said to one of my buddies, well, I didn't need all the shoes anyway, but uh, we lost everything we had. But, uh, you know, I'm glad we left, because if we'd have stayed there, we'd have been, we'd been in the middle of all that, uh, that war, and that, that would have gotten real, real, real ugly. But uh, it, it, it worked out all right. Good. And I'm glad you are right, and I'm glad you came home. Uh, out of all the things you learned from your parents, which one you feel is most valuable? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of persons. Doll was not my uh, biological parent, but she and Mama instilled some things in me that you know, that I'll never forget, and uh, they always said, you know, brother, you got to work, uh, save some of your money, uh, take care of your family, uh, and I and I, I still try to still try to do that today. Uh, uh, the 
the thing that uh, I guess uh, ties me to those two women the most, they, they said things to me that I still use today. Like I get up early because that's what Mama said to do. Get up early and go to work so you'd be there on time. Dog was the kind of person said to me, said, brother, you know, you do the right thing, the right thing, I'll follow, I'll follow you. And, and those kind of things, they stick, they stick, they stick in your head. Okay. Uh, if I might leave one last thought with you. Uh, somebody or someone asked me something. I said, Wes, uh, what did you get out of this civil rights struggle? And I said, uh, I didn't know it at the time, but civil rights struggle in America definitely changed America. Now, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's good. We got a long ways to go. It had so much influence to where it's in, uh, uh, impact on the rest of the world. Uh, if I had anything to say prior to me, no, put it on my tombstone. Whose footsteps are you walking in? I'm walking in my grandfather's footsteps the way I feel, and those other soldiers down through the years, uh, Dr. King, <clears throat> Malcolm X, a lot of folks didn't like him, but uh, I like I like Farrakhan. I like Farrakhan. And uh, I feel, you know, that I, I you know, I'm walking in, in their step, Brown, uh, Tupman, uh <clears throat> the lady who started Methuen Cookman College. I like the man out of Atlanta who is the pre who was the president, Dr. Benny Mays, who was the president of Mohawk, uh, Dr. <clears throat> Booker T. Washington, uh, these folks left such a legacy here for us. And, you know, we take it lightly. I suggest to those persons who might look at this, don't take it lightly. Get very, very busy doing what you need to do to move on with your life and then get the things done that you want to get done and you need to get done.